If you follow me, you know that I have no self-control when it comes to romance books, especially Allie Hazelwood. She writes it, I'm gonna read it. And in this situation, I'm gonna listen to it <laughs> because she just came out with a Spotify exclusive or is it a Spotify exclusive with Allie Hazelwood? I don't know, but there's a new audiobook, new novella. I just finished it. I have some thoughts and feelings. The discussion will be spoiler free. So let's get into it because I love Allie Hazelwood. I love her books. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kat. I love fantasy books and I also really love romance books. And I just finished To Can Play Valley Hayeswood. If you don't know anything about this novella, it follows our main character Viola and she's a lead designer at her video game company. A dream project lands in their laps and it's actually a book adaptation of her all-time favorite series. She's like, yes, I love this. I grew up with the series. I need, I need to do this project. But there is a small, a small like work, you know, like a conundrum, a problem, a hurdle of sorts. She may have to work with like a workplace rival. I wouldn't say it's enemies to lovers. I would say that she kind of, you know, is intrigued by this guy and he wants nothing to do with her. There's work details about this that you can just find out when you listen to the audiobook. So everyone involved is forced on this little retreat to see if people can get along so that they can all work on this dream project together. I'm not an Allie Hayeswood expert. I have read all of her other books, but I'm not going to put that title in this video. <laughs> doesn't feel right, but I do think that there are some classic Ali Hazelwood things that you can expect in this novella. And I wrote them down because I was like, these are things that I need to talk about. Guy who for some reason likes everybody else but the main character, aka Viola. Check. A female character, aka Viola, who cannot fathom why this one guy doesn't like her. Double check. Forced proximity. Triple check. The fact that they keep running into each other and now they're forced to be around each other at this retreat. There's a whole lot of that in this book. Light vibe tension. Absolutely. And I feel like the biggest staple is the miscommunication trope. And I, I know, I know people don't vibe with it. I have very specific needs when it comes to this trope. I need it to be enough miscommunication communication that is still fun and not bothersome, you know? Like if they're straight up not talking at all and they're going in circles, it's a no for me. But the way that Allie Hazelwood does it, gobble gobble ate it up. I will always talk about the vibes of the book. I feel like this one was very light. I feel like the pacing was really good. We got to hit those markers that a story requires without it feeling forced or without it feeling like there wasn't enough time as a whole. And I'll be honest, I will always prefer a full length novel to a novella, but like for a novella, I feel like the pacing was pretty good. Now, when it comes to the humor and the banter, it's all very classic Allie Hazelwood. There are some moments where I'm just like, that is adorable. I feel like like it was kind of awkward, but very relatable at the same time. It felt like they were just two two people who just didn't communicate, but it made sense because it was reinforced by this whole scenario that they're in. When it comes to the romance as a whole, and I will be talking about Spice in this as well, I feel like the chemistry was there. I wouldn't say it's her hottest book, but it was there. And I feel like Spice wise, I feel like I put this in the middle with all of her other books. Like it, there was, there was some Spice, maybe two, two peppers out of five. Nothing crazy. She just threw us some bones. Jesse, the male main character. I liked him. I thought he was kind of lovable. I loved the representation that we got here. A story about two gamers working on a video game. We also got some nice representation in the side characters as well. I loved the setting. It was winter and they were at a cabin, like a cabin retreat. That sounds perfect. And right now is the perfect time to listen to that. Or, you know, like as winter approaches, since we're in fall, like you, you could wait. It's not giving winter in like a aggressive way, but... There is snow. But also there were a few things that happened in this book that made me realize that I don't talk about this enough when I'm reviewing Allie Hazelwood's books. She always takes a moment in each one of her books, as at least what I can remember of them, is that she takes a moment to pinpoint or address or highlight something that she feels unjust or unfair or needs more conversation surrounding that topic. And sometimes they're really subtle, sometimes they're bigger. In her first three books specifically, she talks about life in academia for women, which like so educational to me because that is not my path in life, but I can still learn more about it, you know? And again, some of these moments are very small. Some of them are just like little hints of a highlight. In this one specifically, our female main character Viola is the fifth youngest sister. I'm pretty sure it's fifth youngest sister. She shares what it's like being the youngest sibling, but also the youngest daughter. And there's one moment, which is like 30 seconds, maybe a minute max in this entire novella, where she talks about how they comment on her food intake and how he reacted. Jeff 
Jesse, I was like, you know what? This says a lot about him and a lot about his character. It also highlights the situation as well. Not only the dynamic with her siblings to think that it's okay to talk about that, but it also talks about the issue as well. And like Allie, she gets a lot of hate for some stuff. And I know she writes about like big, strong men with broad shoulders. <laughs> They're kind of like Clark Kent like. And like, I get it. But there are also a lot of other good things to appreciate in her books as well. Because like, I appreciate the big men. <laughs> I appreciate these moments too. So this is a novella that I would recommend. I feel like it's a great way to spend an afternoon if you have cleaning, if you have leaves to rake outside, if you have things to do where you just want to pop in an audiobook. I think this is fun. I do hope, and I don't know if this is a possibility, but I do hope that we get to have physical books of this novella because I know they audiobooks aren't for everyone. Not everyone likes to listen to the books that they're reading. I like it all, but like I totally understand and respect it. So if you do want to listen to this, it is technically a Spotify exclusive, but my library has copies as well as like Hoopla, which is like a, a sub app of my library. I don't know how it works, but it's on both. <laughs> there and it's available. So please, if you are worried that you do not have a Spotify subscription, try your local libraries. I know not everyone has access to them, but if you do, I'm putting it out there like the secret. I'm manifesting this for you. It most likely will be there. And it's only like four and a half hours. So if you have listened to this, let me know your thoughts and feelings or let me know what your favorite Allie Hayeswood book is. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye book lovers. <laughs>